Sacagawea National Geographic Kids by Kitson Jezienka. Sacagawea. Who was Sacagawea? A movie actress as Sacagawea. Sacagawea was a native, a young Native American woman. She traveled by boat and on foot for more than 2,600 miles. She and the other courageous explorers camped for more than a year among wild animals like grizzly bears, buffalo, cougars, and wolves during that expedition across the United States in the early 1800s. Sacagawea helped make history. Expedition, a long journey. Growing up Shoshone. Sacagawea was a brave explorer. Not much else is known about her life, but historians believe she was born around 1790. Her village in present day Idaho sat in the harsh Rocky Mountains. It was not easy for her Shoshone or snake Indian people to find food. As a nomadic tribe, the Shoshone Indians moved between homes to hunt buffalo, wild sheep, salmon, and squirrel. I hope I'm saying their tribe name right. Sacagawea collected berries, seeds, acorns, and even grasshoppers to help provide food for her family. Sacagawea's village was near the Salmon River in present-day Idaho. The Shoshone people dug up the roots of camas flowers for food. Words to know. Historian is a person who studies history. Nomadic is moving around in search of food. Kidnapped. This drawing of Hedatsa warriors on horseback appears on a painted robe made from buffalo skin. When Sacagawea was about 10 years old, a war party from another tribe attacked her family. Young Hadatsa warriors, out to prove their bravery, captured Sacagawea. They took her to live in their village more than 800 miles away. It must have been like moving to a foreign city. The Hadatsa lived in villages along the Knife River in present-day North Dakota. Thousands of people from different tribes lived together. Tree trunks held up large dome-shaped homes. People spoke different languages, grew crops, and traded furs, buffalo skins, and horses. The Hidatsa people lived in dome-shaped homes like this one. In the Knife River villages, Sacagawea survived by learning a new way of life. She learned a new language. She tended fields in the spring and harvested corn, squash, beans, and prairie turnips in the summer and fall. She made pottery. She watched ceremonies with dancing, colorful clothing, and music. People in this village celebrated many things, such as the harvest and the return of birds that had flown south for the winter. At a historical site in North Dakota, you can visit the village where Sacagawea lived after she was kidnapped. This model shows what the inside of a Hidatsa home looked like. A fur trader's wife. Traders would often meet at posts to trade. This art shows for uh, this art shows a trading post in Canada. Fox furs. When Sacagawea was about fifteen years old, she married Toussaint Charbonneau. He was or Charbonneau, Charbonneau, Toussaint Charbonneau. He was a French Canadian fur trader. As a fur trader's wife, Sacagawea met traders from around the world. She even traded on her own for beads, silver, and cloth. Soon she prepared to have a baby. The Corpse of the Corps of Discovery. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson made a deal with France that almost doubled the size of the United States. He planned an expedition to explore the territory. He wanted to find a water route to the Pacific Ocean. 
He called the mission the core of discovery. President Thomas Jefferson. The Louisiana Purchase. In 1803, President Thomas Jefferson made a deal with France for land west of the Mississippi River. This deal was called the Louisiana Purchase. Jefferson paid about three cents an acre for the land. It stretched to the Rocky Mountains. An acre is a large unit of land and core is a group of people working together. Captain Meriwether Lewis, Captain William Clark. Captain Meriwether Lewis and Captain William Clark led the expedition. In the spring of 1804, they left St. Louis, Missouri in a keelboat and smaller wooden boats called pirogues. Pirogues? They traveled through areas including what is now Missouri, Nebraska, Iowa, and South Dakota. A pirogue is a small wooden boat. In November, they reached the Knife River villages and planned to stay for the winter. They set up a camp and called it Fort Mondon. The Corps spent the winter in present-day North Dakota. In her time, Sacagawea was a young woman in 1804. Many things were different from how they are today. Food, instead of shopping for groceries, Indian families grew fruits and vegetables and hunted. They stored food for the winter by drying and smoking meat. Transportation. Most people traveled on foot or horseback or by boat. Children used hand-sewn pictures like this one to learn the alphabet. School. Not all children went to school. Most young people were taught at home or by tutors. Toys and free time. Indian children played with dolls, toy bows, and clay. They competed in ball games. In winter, they had sleds made out of buffalo ribs. U.S. events. In 1804, Thomas Jefferson began his second term as president of the United States. The Expedition. Over the winter, Lewis and Clark hired Charbonneau as an interpreter. They knew he would bring Sacagawea, too. Lewis and Clark needed her because she spoke Shoshone. She could help them talk with the Shoshone Indians for trade to trade for horses. Without horses, the Corps of Discovery might not make it across the Rocky Mountains. An interpreter is a person who puts words in one language into another language. Lewis and Clark meet Charbonneau at Fort Mont Mandan. In February of 1805, Sacagawea gave birth to John Baptiste Charbonneau. Captain Clark nicknamed him Pompey. When the Corps left in April, it had 33 new it had 33 crew members, including Charbonneau, Sacagawea, Pompey, and one large dog. The Corps of Discovery traveled in boats. In his own words, the sight of this Indian woman confirmed those people of our friendly intentions, as no woman ever accompanies a war party of Indians in this quarter. Captain Clark, October 19th, 1805. Seeing Sacagawea and Pompey in the group Native Americans understood that the expedition was a peaceful mission. Quick thinking. Sacagawea's language skills were important to the mission, but it wasn't long before she held the core and uh, she helped the core in other ways, too. One day, high winds tipped one of the boats. Water poured in soaking important items. Sacagawea fished journals, compasses, books, clothing, and other valuable supplies out of the water. It took three days for everything to dry. In his journal, Captain Clark noted Sacagawea's calm, quick thinking. Lewis and Clark's pocket compass. Pages from Clark's journals. In his own words, the Indian woman pointed to the gap through which she said, we must pass. Captain Clark, 1806. Miles and miles. The Corps traveled west, 15 to 20 miles a day, 
toward the mountains through what is today North Dakota and Montana. Sacagawea often walked the muddy river banks with Captain Clark. She might have carried the baby in a Native American cradle board on her back, or perhaps she made a sling out of a cloth to carry him. Along the way, Sacagawea collected food such as wild artichokes, prairie turnips, and berries. A cradle board is a wooden baby carrier used by Native Americans. The Corps of Discovery collected items like rock samples, buffalo hairball, and a sheep horn. The Corps had to travel up the Missouri River on its way to the Pacific Ocean. Finding the Shoshone After months of traveling, Sacagawea recognized the area where the Shoshone would be hunting buffalo in summer. She pointed it out to the Corps, and soon Captain Lewis met with the Shoshone chief about trading for horses. When Captain Lewis asked Sacagawea to be the interpreter for the meeting, she realized the chief was her brother, Kame Owate. Kame Owate. After a tearful reunion, she, uh, he told her that most of their family was gone. Sacagawea was overjoyed to find her brother, but saddened to hear about her family. Sacagawea introduces her brother to her son. To the west. Sacagawea left her brother and headed west with the Corps. Crossing the Rocky Mountains meant day after day of walking across rough land, exhaustion, bitter cold, and very little food. When they finally neared the Pacific coast, Captain Lewis carved his name and date into the tree. They had reached their goal. Now they faced another long winter before they could return east. One day, Lewis and Clark went to see a whale carcass on the beach. Sacagawea wanted to see it, too. There, she saw the ocean for the first time. She called it the Big Lake. A carcass, the dead body of an animal. The Pacific Ocean. Mission complete. During the long journey eastward, the Corps returned Sacagawea, Pompeii, and Charbonneau to their home. Then the rest of the Corps continued east. They had mapped unknown western land, rivers, and mountains. They brought back stacks of journals filled with details about Native Americans. They brought back scientific notes about hundreds of plants and animals they had never seen before. They brought back Native American artifacts. They also brought back lots of stories. Stories of their adventures made other Americans dream about heading out west. Artifact, a handmade object or tool. A page of notes about a plant collected by Lewis and Clark. Pompey traveled with the Corps from the age of two months to 19 months. Captain Clark knew Sacagawea had been an important member of the Corps. To thank her, he offered to educate her son. The captain had enjoyed many nights around the campfire with the smiling baby. He wanted Pompey to have a good life and a good education. When Pompey was old enough for school, Sacagawea brought him to live with Captain Clark. The boy learned to speak four languages. He later spent years in Europe before returning to America. In the year following the return of the Corps of Discovery, Sacagawea had a daughter named Lizette. Eight cool facts about Sacagawea. One, no one knows for sure what Sacagawea's name was as a Shoshone girl. Two, as a child, Sacagawea probably sewed antelope skin dolls and dressed them in clothes like those she wore decorated with colorful beads. Three, during the expedition, Lewis and Clark often described Sacagawea in their journals as strong and patient. Four, Sacagawea appeared on a U.S. coin before Lewis or Clark did. Five, Lewis and Clark referred to Sacagawea as the interpreter's wife and the Indian woman. Six, in the Hidatsa language, Sacagawea's name means bird woman. Seven, when Lewis and Clark's book was published... The publisher spelled Sacagawea with a J instead of a G, leading people to mispronounce her name. 
eight. Shoshone children like Sacagawea counted their age by how many winters they had lived. Her final years. During her lifetime, Sacagawea was not well known. No images of her exist. Most historians believe she died in her 20s in South Dakota. Others believe she lived into her 80s and died in Wyoming. After the expedition, Sacagawea became well known when an author wrote about her based on interviews with Captain Clark. The author asked lots of questions about the Indian woman. Even today, people are still interested in Sacagawea's story. Actress on the set of Night at the Museum 2 in 2008. Needlepoint in the 1930s. A reenactment in 2006. A postage stamp, 1994. In honor of Sacagawea. In the years following the Corps of Discovery's journey, Sacagawea became known as a heroine. She was the strong, smart woman who helped the expedition. You can visit a monument in Sacagawea's honor near her birthplace in what is now Salmon, Ohio, Idaho. Sacagawea Memorial, Salmon, Idaho. All over the United States, statues, monuments, memorials, parks, mountain peaks, schools, and other landmarks Celebrate her courage and her role in American history. Memorial. Something created to remind people of a person, event, or important idea. People in Washington State named this rock Sacagawea and Papoose Rock to honor Sacagawea. Fact or fiction. Many historians disagree about the facts of Sacagawea's life. From the spelling and pronunciation of her name to where and when and how she died... Almost everything we know about her life comes from journals, diaries, and notes of members of the expedition. One thing we know for sure is that Sacagawea was a respected member of the Corps of Discovery. She was a true American explorer. An illustration of Sacagawea and Pompeii. Sacagawea.